and today we're going to talk about quilting your, your layers together. So you've got your blocks done, you've got your batting ready, you've got your backing ready, and now it's time to put all three layers together. Yay! So today let's talk a little bit about the three layers. So it's really difficult sometimes to take your top layer and your batting layer and your backing and get them sandwiched together and completely totally flat. Um, if you have a huge workspace, you know, like a tile floor or um, a wood floor or a big cutting table, those are kind of the best areas to do this because it really does take a long time um, to get all the pieces pinned together or um, however you want to do it to get the three layers together. What a lot of people do is just pin them. And I think I talked to you before in the tools video about the big using the big corsage pins for this step. And sometimes that works really well. Other options that people use are they have these little guns that, you know, you can poke these, they're little plastic, you know, sticky things, you know, like kind of like what they use in the store, to, the department stores to put the price tags on clothes. And it's just a temporary thing that after you're done quilting, you just cut out and you can like use this gun. It's a, an extra investment. I think it's, I've never used them. I don't like them. Um, I would rather use pins. What a lot of people do too is just start in the middle and work out from the middle and hope for the best. That's never worked for me. Um, some people will pin a little bit and then put it in their machine and put a basting stitch down. Now what a basting stitch is, is just a very wide stitch. So, well not quite that wide, but you know, that you can set your machine to have like the widest stitch, like a half inch or an inch or something. And it's very easy to tear out when you're done, but it holds everything together while you're working on it and kind of keeps the three layers um, so they're not gaps in the back or gaps in the front. Um, Another really good thing to use on your domestic machine is a walking foot. Now on a regular sewing machine, you have these feed dogs underneath your needle and underneath your presser foot. And what this feed, they're just these little gripper things that come up and you can see them. The feed dogs come up and they pull your fabric through from the bottom. But they don't necessarily pull your fabric from the top when you've got those three layers. So sometimes that's why you get those gaps is because your presser foot on top is pushing your top fabric forward while the your is pushing your top fabric forward while your presser feet are pulling um, in the opposite direction. <laughs> what you can get is a thing called a walking foot and it's just an attachment like any other foot you put on top but this walking foot also has feed dogs on the top that work in, co in coordination with your feed dogs on the bottom so that your top fabric and your bottom fabric are getting pulled through at the same rate and you get fewer gappies like that. Um, walking feet are a really good idea. So we talked before about um, what stitch in the ditch means. When you're, you've got your three layers together, okay, and you pinned them or you basted them or you used the little gun and put the little plastic things, but you get your three layers solid um, and then you turn it over and you look to, for any gaps and you fix any gaps and then you turn it back over and you look on the top for any gaps and you fix any gaps and then you turn it back over and look again on the back for any gaps um, and you do this process of flipping it over and over until you get to the point where both layers are flat and then you're ready to go to the machine. Yay! So then you have to decide. You can stitch the ditch which means basically you don't want anybody to see your stitching um, stitches, which you, you just sew them, you put your needle stitches right in that seam. Um, you know, not every single seam, but enough that you're going to have the integrity and hold the batting together. Most battings will sh tell you right on the label that your stitches need to be four inches apart or less. So this from here to here is about four inches. So you could just stitch around this, this square of these four squares and that should be enough to hold it together for many years and many washings. Um, if you feel like you're going to be using your quilt and loving your quilt more um, and washing it more than normal, then you might want to stitch a lot more. So you can stitch the ditch and that's fine. And um, it's remember the stitching can be all about 
just holding the integrity of the quilt and making the quilt last longer. The stitching can also be decorative and part of the pattern, right? So if you wanted to, you could get just a contrasting, wildly bold um, thread and make that part of the quilt top. Either way works. Remember, it's your quilt. You can do whatever you want. Um, I have also used some glow-in-the-dark thread, and that's really fun. I liked that. Another thing that you can use to quilt your three layers together are stencils. So you lay these on your fabric, and then you use your marking pencils. Um, you might want to watch the tools video again about the marking pencils. And you just draw the, mark, the color in these lines, and then you use those colored lines as stitch marks. After you're done stitching, you just wash it um, with some plain water usually will get that out. Now they, these stencils come in all different sizes, all different shapes, squares, rectangles. This would be one I would use on a border. Um, and you can use these to, you know, after you've basted and after or pinned or however you're going to put your three layers together, then you would stencil and get your pattern down, your stitching pattern down. Now these stencils are reusable stencils that you would just use your pen, your tracing pencil and um, draw, draw out the pattern on your fabric and then wash it off and then you could just use this over and over and over. Um, there are also stencils, paper stencils that you pin right to your fabric and then you sew right over the paper and then when you're done stitching you just tear it off and throw it away. And so it's a one use kind of thing. Um, they also have stencils where you can um, get like a little rotary tool that you get these pieces of chalk paper and you put the stencil on top of your fabric and then you draw with this stencil under the chalk paper and then you can reuse that, st that paper stencil over and over again. So I do recommend though that the quilts that you're going to love and wash and use regularly um, do need denser stitching in their layers than others. If you're going to make a quilt for a wall hanging, you know, not you don't need to um, make the density of the stitches quite so close together. But if you're going to use it as a practical keep warm quilt and wash it and love it on a regular basis, then your stitches do need to be like at least four inches or whatever the manufacturer's um, label tells you to keep it. Let's talk a little bit about what threads I use for quilting. Um, I use the exact same threads that I use for stitching. I use 40 weight threads for pretty much everything. So again, you do want your threads to be the same unless you're going to go with um, hand stitching and then you may want to use um, a heavier weight thread. And remember when you're looking at the thread, like, like an 80 weight is thinner than a 50 weight. It goes opposite. So. You know, the bigger the number, the thinner the thread. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But I pretty much use 40 weight for everything I do. So um, that's what I like, and that's what my machine likes, and that's what my machine doesn't give me a hassle about. So that's probably one of the reasons why I like it. <laughs> now let me just say for a minute that um, when we talked about the tools, there are oodles and oodles of tools out there for quilting on your um, domestic machine. Oodles of tools for quilting, stencils, types of like, they have like these little clamps that if you want to roll your quilt up and um, clamp it together and there's just, I mean, just a bunch of stuff out there. Um, I've tried many of them and none of them work, okay? <laughs> uh, I think to me the biggest thing that's helpful when you're quilting is to as much as possible put your machine in a, in a position where you have the largest flat surface as possible. And I talked about that in the beginning video where we talked about what kind of sewing machine to get. Um, you know, that big flat workspace is the best thing, you, the best tool you can have so that your quilt is always flat when it's going under the needle. There's plenty of times where you have to roll it and scrunch it because, you know, from your needle to your machine, there's only so much space. And so when you're quilting on one side of your quilt, you know, you've got to roll it all up because you don't necessarily want to, um, you know, like, okay, from the middle out, so top to bottom, and then from the middle out the other way, so bottom to top, because then you'll get a quilt, especially if you don't have a walking foot, you'll get a quilt that has like a little twist in the middle. So you kind of want to start, 
you know, always start from the top is always the top and you're always working down, always working either left or right, um, you know, so that you're doing that consistently so that that any of that extra fabric and if you don't have a walking foot, any of that extra fabric all gets pushed one direction and then you can adjust at the bottom um, and and absorb it easily. But if you spread that out, you know, it's not always, it's always easy to do that. So the other thing people do is they there's a particular foot that you can use. Um, I think it's called a darning foot or maybe a quilting foot. I'm not sure. Um, but it you have to lower your presser foot otherwise you're not going to get tension on your top thread right so but what if you don't want your walking foot to or your your regular presser foot to be down there so there's a foot that's basically just has like a circle thing on the bottom and then you can just kind of free hand quilt and it goes all over you can lower your feed dogs off the bottom so the feed dogs aren't aren't interfering with your fabric and you can just kind of free motion all over the place and that's good. Um, some people really, really like doing it that way too. In our next video, we're going to talk about binding. And then we're getting really close to the end. I know you're excited. I know I am.